Welcome to the Kinjo's Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f*** we want. Welcome back to the Kinjo's Podcast, Moving in the Shadows. I'm your host, Ben. And today we got world famous <laughs> child prodigy dancer, <laughs> choreographer, creative director, oh actor, singer, pianist, <laughs> award winning chef, oh and geez. video editor. Oh, God. I got this off of a website. That's a pretty <laughs> extensive uh, description of yourself. What kind of website is that? <laughs> uh, we got Sean Liu in the house. What's up, Sean? Hey, how are you doing? Dude, welcome to the podcast, man. <laughs> Thank you for having so me. So I pulled this, I think it was MSA's website that had all this. Uh, but if like if all of this is true, man, I have so many questions to ask. <laughs> like, how are you all these things? Well, first off, how old are you? I'm 17. 17 yeah. years old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and at what age did you start dancing? Uh, about like four, four and a half. I mean, I, I've always been dancing since I was like little and like since i was able to like walk okay. and it was always just like something that i found very connected to and it was like just playing music and kind of performing with my sisters in front of my parents in the okay. living room and then my parents just decided to like take me to my sister's studio and just dance and take a class and i, I remember just like taking my first class was just like something that i never wanted to stop doing and it was just like something that i was so just attracted to and, yeah. and and it was always just something with music that i felt really connected to so what was uh what, what did your parents kind of put you into a dance class no or so you just found it yourself i mean i saw my sisters take class okay. and i kind of just looked at them and i was just like why can't i do that you mm -hmm. know and they're like you can't so do your sisters still dance no okay. i mean they dabble okay but not like so you you're the one who took it and ran with it yeah i'm i'm, I'm okay. the one who kind of just took it and just ran without yeah, them <laughs> yeah. so what was uh the, the history in terms of so you said you started taking classes at your sister's studio or the, the studio yeah the same studio that my sisters uh went to also we we it was just by our house and you know we took some i took some classes myself on my own level and then at a certain point i kind of met up with them and kept just taking classes it was almost like every day of my life during mm -hmm. that time and um it, it, it didn't feel like classes. It just felt like another opportunity to just get in a room full of people that love the same thing that I do yeah. and just, uh, just to go for it. And were you, so when you got in, were you able to just kind of start picking up on the movement or was it I, hard for you at first? <laughs> I don't know. I think that, I think that I remember just like not being able to get the moves, but what I do remember is that I was just having a ball. Like I was just having a mm, blast. And yeah. I could I, I remember watching some of my old videos and it was a lot of just like facials. Like I don't <laughs> even think I don't even think I was doing the right moves. Yeah. But like it was just well, a you bunch believed of facials. it in your face. <laughs> exactly. Your face I believed it, okay. it more than anyone and I and I <laughs> believe that my my dancing was like not the choreography, but yeah, it, yeah. it worked anyway. So wow. yeah. Okay. And so uh was <laughs> dance the first thing you fell into or were you doing music, like piano um, and all this stuff I at did, the same time? I played piano. I I learned how to play piano and dance around the same time. Okay. I think. Yeah. And um like I said, I just always found some sort of personal connection with music. So I wanted to be involved with that as much as possible. Yeah. And at that, at that point, it was like a lot of piano and then a lot of dancing. And then I kind of had to sacrifice piano for a little bit to to dance more because there was Got a lot you. of competitions and a lot of like traveling and, and this, this, this and that. Yeah. And so then I sacrificed that for a little bit. And my sister played piano, too. So it was a lot of like, like inspiration for my sisters because they I kind of I kind of looked up to them when they started something and I was like, oh, I want to try. And yeah. then um, at that point, then they left. They forgot about it. And I still kept going with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was it was really just um, something that I was interested in. And most of the time when I'm like interested in something. I will like go out my way to find the the most efficient way of learning it and sure. kind of just yeah. going with it because I think that it's just fun, you know, doing something that you feel comfortable with totally. and 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 you don't really feel like you're learning it because you just love to do it right, and you right. you you can't wait to explore with what you can do with it. Yeah. So yeah. Did you grow up out here? You said you're yeah. from Pomona. I, I I grew up around the, my area f my entire life around like Pomona that okay. type of area. Yeah, because. Uh, it's quiet and it's also just it is far from LA. It's super far from yeah, LA, but yeah. it's like it's a it's a good like break when you when you come back home and you're just in an environment that's completely away from everything. So 
Did yeah. you did you grow up around dancers too? Were your friends dancers? No, I I so mainly your sisters. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I grew up around like my competition friends, like okay. my old competition friends that I competed with. So um, you, when you I was kind younger. of went through the whole studio competitive. Yeah. Circuit. Oh, I was that, a studio yeah. kid for okay. sure. I yeah. was. I started as a studio kid. I competed as a studio kid. It was a lot of studio stuff. <laughs> and then you did conventions. Uh, was oh it, was my it Pulse god! Yeah, I started Pulse when I was eight. Yeah, and okay. um, I, I remember that I wasn't allowed to be in the intermediate room because I was too young. Uh huh. And all I remember is me wearing like these bright blue pants, <laughs> uh, a tank top that had like a tie uh -huh. sewn into the tank top, Amazing. but it was just a piece of fabric. Yeah. And um, and I just like. It was like the coolest thing ever. I walked into a room full of hundreds of people yeah. with the coolest fac line of faculty, and and then I got protege, and and then you That's know I was tight. confused because I wasn't sure what that was, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I got an even brighter shirt that was green, yeah, um, and that was like like that was like really exciting to me, and then at that point it kind of like it kind of like opened up my eyes to realizing that age for me had nothing to, it had nothing to do with age yeah. for wh wherever place I was going to right. and if, what's funny was that I wasn't even trying to approach to get protege mm -hmm. it was really just like I was like I'm gonna go in the front and I'm just gonna give my all and you know during all the freestyle circles I'll just I'll just do what I love yeah and I feel like that's that's um what kind of caught my mentor's attentions mm. uh from that moment because I think that at that point you can kind of tell who's trying to do it for the teachers right. and who's trying to do it for yourself, you right, know? Right, so right, right. it's, it was really that kind of feeling of just like, um, like I want to do conventions forever. Yeah. And, and then, and then I did, and then I kept going to more polls events and yeah. then, then we went to being like elite and everything like that. So yeah, it was an interesting journey. <laughs> That's dope, man. Uh, well, I think kids will either be one of two breeds. You're either the yeah. super shy kid who yeah. doesn't want to do anything in front of people. Yeah, yeah. And then you're the kid who's like, I don't <laughs> care who's out here. I'm going to just be me. And, yeah. and so you're yeah. obviously the other kid. Yeah. Right? If you ask any of my mentors, um, all they're going to bring up is my clothes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool, man. So, okay. Um, you loved it and that's why you did that that's amazing um yeah. but with that though in terms of how you approach training you know when mm -hmm. you take classes um did you did you already kind of know how to take class because i think you know for myself as, as a teacher mm -hmm. when i'll see kids in my class um you know and, and there's all sorts of the ways that kids learn is different but mm -hmm. you know a lot of times kids don't really pay attention to details they just yeah. want to while out yeah, and they yeah, just want to yeah. perform and they're not even yeah. really like learning the choreography or paying attention to what the teacher's saying in terms yeah. of like you know texture movement yeah, and quality yeah, yeah. movement so for yourself did you were you able to kind of um like key into those uh, your class taking skills at an early age yeah i think i think for me it was a lot of that discipline came from ballet like i feel like okay. most of the time when people don't realize is that like like yes, you do repeat a lot of uh, certain combos in ballet, and and it does improve your technique, but it also really improves your discipline. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, I I went into ballet at a really young age, and I did it for a long time. And what that helped me realize is that like every little bit of move that I was doing, the teacher recognized it and either fixed it or acknowledged it to make it better. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that for me, that kind of just was infused in my mind, mm. uh, in a sense where anytime I was taking a class. Either if it was hip hop, I'm not, when people say like, oh, ballet helps a lot. When I say that, I, I, I mean like, it's helped me realize like, okay, if this teacher is doing a wave from his elbow and out, he's also using his fingers to finish the wave mm. rather than just using his elbow to right. put out the wave, you know? Right. So all those little details that I feel like I've kind of been able to catch from most classes mm -hmm. it has been really, has been really, come, has really came from like, ballet mm. and it's not necessarily something where you take one class and you're like oh i'm disciplined mm -hmm. it's like you it's kind of just this thing where it's been it was a routine for me right. when i was younger right. and and then it just like i said it definitely just infused in my mind at a sense where yeah. it automatically caught my eyes for any details that the teachers were talking right. about and stuff like that did you start with ballet was that the first i started with tap with tap okay. yeah i started with tap and then i think i went to hip-hop and then ballet. How many years of ballet training did you get? Like 
four or five years. Okay. Yeah. And do you there. still go back and, and take class and, and make sure your, your knife is sharp? My knife is a little <laughs> dull right now. Hey, it's but okay. it's I mean, okay. well, I mean, I, I actually these these past couple of uh, months, it's for me. My main focus is really trying to get my technique back. I yeah. think that that was. I mean, as of right now too, like it's just a priority for me, kind of, kind of opening my my horizons a little bit more, mm-hmm. rather than just sticking with what people would expect and everything like that. Right. I kind of want to, kind of just just it's more of a it's more of a personal goal. Mm-hmm. Where you know you don't necessarily have to tell people like oh I'm going to do this every day to reach right. this. It's just more like for myself. I I feel like I should be doing this specific exercise or this every day to open my body up and open my 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 mind up for mm-hmm. more possibilities for just this small specific style because mm-hmm. they can go further than you expect. But mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like you have to take it further yourself and yeah. you can't. We can't. You can't wait for someone to just tell you that, yeah. And then, and then do it, and then people will be like, "Oh my god, that was crazy." Yeah. Because at that point, people have already seen it, or people have already expected it. You know, so it's that kind of mindset that I've had to put myself in, especially since I don't necessarily have. No, I can't say that. I could make time, but especially I have since I haven't had been able to take sure. ballet classes. Yeah, you're yeah, busy. Yeah. You're doing yeah. your thing. Well, so the, re- uh, the reason I ask about the whole ballet thing, because I, <laughs> I have this interesting observation when I when I come across people who are really dope, let's say, you know, hip-hop, urban choreography yeah. Yeah, dancers, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm just like, dang, you're really good. Question, <laughs> did you take ballet? And most of them will say yes, yeah. you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. so then my, my hypothesis is that, because I've never taken ballet. Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up technically trained or yeah. anything like that. I didn't grow up in a studio. Mm-hmm. And um, most of what I learned from whatever I called hip hop or urban dance was mm-hmm. just watching and then mimicking and then trying to find ways to make it work for my body yeah. versus yeah. being actually taught um, like technically how th- like your body works and how to yeah. unlock mm-hmm. certain areas in your body yeah, yeah, to yeah. you know extend and to find your center and mm-hmm. all of that stuff no one taught me that stuff but the people who knew or got that training mm-hmm. have such an understanding of their body and an awareness to detail mm-hmm. that um you know a lot of kids uh that didn't get that training mm-hmm. what might not um understand right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I ask but mm-hmm. um so with that though so you you mentioned that um for yourself you you fo- you found what felt good to your body in terms of you finding your own style and and yeah. kind of fusing from the technique that you would learn from ballet to mm-hmm. taking hip-hop classes and stuff like that yeah i mean i even now i'm still trying to find my own thumbprint of a style mm-hmm. you know i think that it's it's typically a challenge because everything starts to happen so quickly these days and everything is already done you know mm-hmm. as days go by so it's kind of like for me it's 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 kind of like my mission to figure out what i can do to allow people to realize that this is what i do mm-hmm. rather than this is what i learned this is what i do mm-hmm. and at that point then i can offer something that most people can't offer Mm -hmm. you know when they take my class or when they ask me a question or something like that you know and I think that that's kind of my 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 mission of just like finding my own Mm -hmm. thumbprint so that way it's 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 um it's it's original at that point you know when did you start actually teaching for yourself I started teaching when uh actually at a young age when I was like I think 11 Okay. Um, but the I th- the only reason why I started teaching was because um, I w- I was trying to raise money for like fundraisers or mm-hmm. charities, uh, and and I I never and even now I I I've never done a master class and I I hate saying the word master class because I don't consider myself a, a master, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So anytime I would put out a class, it would always be a workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I. I started teaching for only one reason, which was to raise money for a specific cause. And I did that for my sister's school. I did that for my first teacher's uh, child um, as a charity. And, and it was all those things. And, and everything connected in a sense with all those classes where I just felt like I just loved to, to show my support to people that would come to my class mm-hmm. and kind of give the students something that I've learned that I feel like they probably wouldn't be able to learn from just a video, mm-hmm. you know? So 
I, I, at that point then I started teaching rarely in LA, Mm -hmm. um, and as a workshop. Mm -hmm. And then I started traveling a little bit more and then experiment a little bit more. And it was, it's, it's, it's really just, it's still a journey for me, but it's, it's, it's a really exciting, uh, road to see of how far I've well i hope it's a journey you're only 17 man <laughs> like, i think i'm like twice your age right now and i'm still doing this thing and it's still a journey um, yeah. but no so that's cool like that um you know I, I and i always wonder what it's like to be um growing up in an era where social media was um you grew up with it i didn't grow up with social media i didn't grow up with youtube yeah. or yeah. i didn't grow up with the internet like yeah. you know i remember yeah, when yeah, the yeah. internet was invented i was like oh, what is this <laughs> dial up modem but like you know um it's so easy to get information and to yeah. get access to you know anything dance yeah. to cooking to yeah. yeah how to build stuff right it's super easy and um but i think and, and I don't want to be that old dude who's like, oh, these kids, they, they just don't know how to appreciate stuff. But I always wonder, like, you know, what what keeps somebody um, hungry enough to know that there aren't shortcuts to success or shortcuts to um, being a seasoned uh, person or a quote unquote master, mm-hmm. as you put it, you talk about master classes and stuff. Um, so it seemed like you really value, um, being a student of things. And in for particular, sure. right now we're talking about yeah, dance, right? For sure. So, um, and then you said you, you only, you would only teach to raise funds for causes that mattered to you. Yeah. Stuff that's like how that. I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So is that a, a desire of yours now? Like, is that a focus where you're now in a place where you want to focus on being a teacher and, and putting your own stuff? stuff out there and, and teaching. Yeah, I, I guess I would say that I wouldn't want to build a career as a teacher. Got I think you. that for me, the only reason why I, like I said, rarely teach in LA is because it's, for me, it's hard to find a certain hunger in LA that, that you felt a long time ago, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that like, I remember taking classes from obviously like in polls from like Tess to Sandra and, mm-hmm. and Brian and Tucker and mm-hmm. all these great teachers. And, and, and I remember like being the smallest kid in the room, uh, in LA and kind of just like doing it with the same, doing it with people that had the exact same passion as I had mm-hmm. or the same, I guess, mindset. And I feel like I, I only start to feel like teaching in LA if I'm automatically inspired by a song. Mm-hmm. And at that point I feel like I feel like, oh, I think maybe everyone has their own story that they could share with this song if I push them enough to be vulnerable, mm. you know? And I feel like that's kind of, that's how I feel like that, that's my mission for me as a teacher. Because mm-hmm. like anywhere I would go, um, I, I, I would only go to a specific event to teach if I feel like I have enough desire and hunger to to pull something out of them that they may not realize mm-hmm. is inside of them, yeah. you know? And, and, and if not, then I, I just stay away from it. Cause I, it's, 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 I, 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 for me, I feel like it's kind of almost useless or unnecessary for me to come out somewhere yeah. and, and teach them something if, if someone else could do the exact same thing, mm. you know? And, mm-hmm. and that's why, that's why I, for me, I have to make, I have to make sure that there's something that I could, I can guarantee them something that they wouldn't expect or something that they won't forget. So that way they can carry that with them for other classes, mm-hmm. for other teachers and stuff like that. Yeah. And I guess that's the only, that the reason why like I I'm like this is because I, you know, this is kind of how I learned dance or just life from yeah. my mentors, you know? Yeah. Um, and this is how it felt 24 seven in LA hmm. when I was, 10 or when I was 11. And I, I just, I guess I have that like desire to kind of push that back into LA Mm -hmm. and, 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 or just anywhere, you know, and, and, and just create a heartwarming feeling that, Mm -hmm. that you, you get in certain places. Sure. So I, I think that, you know, dance is the biggest purpose of dance is just uniting people. Right. You know, rather than, competing or 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 fighting against each other right you know and i feel like the whole dancing industry is it, it 
it, it's naturally competitive, mm-hmm. which is fine. But it should also it should also result in a way to bring people together mm-hmm. than, you know, pull them apart. Yeah, so. I love that. Um, you mentioned mentors. So uh, coming up in the scene, who who were the people that you were looking up to that you would consider mentors to yourself? I have a lot. <laughs> so, so it's like a whole list. It's like I got to pull up a yeah, scroll or something. that's good. But I mean, at the top of my head, you know, I would say a lot of like the Pulse faculty or... Um, or like, mm, I would say like Ian Ian or, yeah, Ian or Tassandra, Brian, Will, Janelle, um, A ton. A ton, (laughs) yeah. Honestly, Tucker, Kyle, like a a lot of them. And what's great about them is just that, that they all have the same goal, mm-hmm. but they all have something different to offer. Mm-hmm. And, and every time I took the class, I always left feeling some sort of new desire to just kind of add almost like this is, this is weird, but like, like when you test out a bunch of recipes uh, for, for a new recipe, you know, you're doing mm-hmm. like four different versions of a pancake mm-hmm. and then you take little bits of those recipes mm-hmm. to kind of build your own recipe. You know, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like that feeling and, and whatever feels right for you in each class, you kind of take that for, you take that for yourself and keep it in you and kind of allow that to just naturally develop as you're doing your own style. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of, that's kind of how I learned to be how I am with, 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 with all my mentors. Yeah, you know, that's so. good. Well, I, I like that you find you or that you find um, importance in having mentors. Yeah. Um, that I sure. also think that's not something that everybody naturally just thinks like, oh, I need to get a mentor. You yeah. Know, I think, you know, as kids, you know, we tend to think that we know it all or yeah. like, I can figure it out. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm smart enough. The or internet. I'm, yeah, the internet. YouTube yeah, is my mentor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, as great as YouTube is, it's a great tool. Yeah. Um, it, it, it can never fabricate actual human to human interaction, you know, yeah. and, and um, you can't ask YouTube questions really, right? I mean, yeah. I guess you can type in how do I blah, blah, yeah, blah, and then it'll yeah, show you a video, yeah. but then that the interaction of like, you know, what hap- what, what do you do when you're not inspired? Yeah, and or, having a mentor doesn't necessarily mean like you have to see them every day. Sure. You yeah. know, I feel like sometimes people confuse, you know, having a mentor meaning like, oh, you see them every day to, to dance 24-7. Mm-hmm. I feel like having a mentor is just having a personal connection with with that specific person mm-hmm. and, and, and in a way where, Anytime you're doing something or anytime you see them doing something, they're always supporting you mm-hmm. with the same feeling of, of, of how you started and when mm-hmm. you first met them. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's that like I, I'm always grateful for that because it's just it's crazy to see how they're so busy and they have all the success. But they still come back to the people that they train and yeah. that they support. And and and, you know, it's, it's up to you to kind of parallel that same exact feeling towards them Mm -hmm. to show them that you know all the time that you spent on me will will i will try my hardest to make it worth your time Mm -hmm. and worth Mm -hmm. your 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 effort you know and i feel like that to me is 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 just something that's super important for any of us to remember yeah so yeah yeah Yeah, i think um i mean it just even seems like in the way that you're talking the people that have had the most impact on your people that um, sure support you and stuff, but, uh, will challenge you also because, yeah, exactly. um, you know, they, them kind of having the years and experience over you will most likely see things in you that yeah. you probably may not even notice or know of, of yourself yet. Exactly. And a good mentor will do things to challenge you to extract those things and yeah, to bring those things out of you. Go outside so. of the box, push your limits. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, cause I mean, they don't, they don't necessarily they don't necessarily hold back on anything mm-hmm. because they, they, they believe in you so much at a point where they know that you can do it and it has nothing to do with the fact that you can't do it. It's just the fact that you're telling yourself that you can't do right. it. You know what I mean? Right. And I feel like it, those, those type of mentors or just friends in general, it's, it's, it's like they, they can tell when it's, when it's something that's physically impossible and then when it's just mentally hard for them, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, and, and I think that when it's just mentally hard, 
they find a way to push that out of your whole system mm -hmm. and just tell them to just go for it, just risk it. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, you really have nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, you have more to gain than to lose, which yeah. is, which is like, like I said, experience, knowledge, failure, you know, all those, all those great trinkets that, that will allow you to grow yeah. more and more and keep up with the pace of everything that's going on. Yeah, so. yeah. You mentioned that um, for dance for you wasn't this thing where you were trying to necessarily compete to be better than the next person, but just for you to grow, for you to express, and for you to connect with people, unite people. Yeah. Um, but you... You did enter World of Dance, <laughs> which is one of the biggest <laughs> dance competition platforms, right? Uh, <laughs> so yeah. uh, how how was that like? And and well, one, um, before we even get into that experience, what made you feel like you wanted to enter like a platform like that? <laughs> well, I didn't at the first. Oh, okay. I promise you, yeah. I, I, I really tried so hard to push myself away from being on world of dance because okay. i was on world of dance for the first season with mm -hmm. with i'm a beast mm -hmm. uh and then the second season came along and they asked me and they were like you want to come back and i was like mm -hmm. no <laughs> it was like a quick no i was like yeah. oh and then another person asked me was like would you like to come back in an audition and i was like no yeah and you know it was it was like for me it was like a confident no i was like i'm not going back it's I, well, I, why why was it was uh what happened season one that made you so confident that you didn't want to do season two i guess it was just the amount of pressure and uh, for me it was a lack of confidence that i could do this myself mm. you know it was definitely a lack of confidence where i was just like like going through season one we went through a whole team yet we still got cut you know and and for me i'm like like it was a great learning experience but at the same time i just couldn't see myself dealing with all that pressure myself mm -hmm. and and having to choreograph something that 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 was on a time limit and mm -hmm. that was in front of millions of people mm -hmm. with uh with them judging you you know yeah. what i mean and 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 for me i was just like like it, i couldn't I, I just really couldn't imagine myself doing it mm -hmm. and at that point then i i guess i guess just like one day i had a change of heart and it was really just like what happens if I say yes? Like, what if, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it was really just a what if moment. And then I started looking deeper into it. And I was like, okay, well, if I do go into it, you know, at, at a certain point when you step into a competition like this, everyone's a great dancer. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone can dance. Everyone is amazing. Mm -hmm. But at that certain stage, you have to remember that no one's looking for a great dancer that they're looking for a, a great artist that that they can connect with mm -hmm. they're looking for they're looking for people that that step onto that stage and 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 do it and you can tell that they're doing it because they love it and they're doing it to inspire others you know what i mean and and i feel like with 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 a show that big like world of dance it, it it's much more than just putting out the fact that you can dance mm -hmm. it's it's the fact that you can use what you love to do to inspire others right. and, and motivate them to do something that they were scared to do, you know? And, and so that's why I like, I like, I called my partner Casey and, uh, I mentioned it before we had like a awkward FaceTime call, <laughs> super awkward cause, cause she didn't expect it either. She, I was yeah. just like, like, it was really like, I pulled up my phone. I was like, Hey, you want you want to do world of dance and and then she like put her phone on the floor and i was staring at the ceiling for like like 10 minutes and i was just like uh casey you know and yeah. and and then and the only reason why I, like the the main reason why i asked her was because before then we did a video called wrong words mm -hmm. and it was like one of my first videos that that it was like it was a very deep message it was one of the first videos that kind of portrayed the reason why i love to dance mm -hmm. and it, it it put out just this sort of feeling that i had in my life and in her life too it was just like a life experience that i felt like needed to be represented through dance because people will pay attention more in the form of dancing than mm -hmm. when you're just telling them mm -hmm. you know they'll actually understand the the result the climax the resolution the the, the consequence of everything that you feel when you experience this specific experience, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't know, she, she had this vulnerability in her and this determination. And I guess that we kind of had the same mindset into stepping in the competition mm -hmm. and, you know, our biggest concern wasn't like, 
like, oh, we're not going to win. Like, there's going to be a hundred. There's it's the whole world, you yeah, know, like yeah. our biggest concern was just like, OK, what not only is what's going to make us stand out, but what is our what is our main reason in stepping into this? Mm. You know, why are we stepping into this? Uh, why did we start dancing? And then our purpose of starting to dance had the same reason of us stepping into this competition, mm. you know, because we started dancing because we love it. We started dancing because it brought us the people that we love today closer, you know, and if we have that same exact mindset in the competition, not only will we like make new friends or, 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 you know, step out on the stage again, but we'll be able to connect with people that we've never even thought of mm -hmm. and, 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 and share them our, our love for dance mm -hmm. and share them, you know, the, the main goal of spreading positivity mm -hmm. and spreading love and what, what needs to be heard or what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. And we need to spread love just like Oreo, you know, just like Oreo <laughs> showing me love right now. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> 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 that's um that's 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 kind of our biggest like purpose walking into the competition like i said it was, i started dancing because i loved it yeah, you know yeah. and i stepped into the competition because i love dance yeah. you know what i mean and it's it's it's, it's, it's as simple as that because mm -hmm. when when you love dance so much your biggest concern isn't about going through the next round right it's just about setting a piece that that will represent your true passion mm -hmm. for dancing and mm -hmm. your true passion for just inspiring others mm -hmm. because you can there's there's no limit to how many people you can inspire yeah. honestly you know yeah and, and 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 if there's no limit to how much people you can inspire then there's no limit to how how far you can take dancing to for you sure. know for so sure. that's kind of the whole yeah, so so oh, season okay. two was when you uh, was it season two or season three? Season two, season two, yeah. yeah. Um, and how was that experience different for you? I mean, well, one you were on with the team, and then yeah. now it's just you two, yeah. and then you know, I mean, yeah, like all eyes are literally just <laughs> on like you two, right? Yeah. Um, what was like maybe some of like your biggest uh, takeaways from from that experience? Man, well. Like you said, definitely the diff biggest difference is there's a team mm -hmm. and there's two of you. Sure. So the the big focus is literally on two people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you walk out and you can't hide behind your friends. <laughs> you try to hide yeah. behind your partner and it just looks stupid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm trying to find, I guess, another way of saying this because a lot of people have asked us like you know, what was the biggest thing you got away from, you got from mm -hmm. World of Dance doing mm -hmm. season two. And, you know, like I said, walking into it, there was a, a big lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the first round, you do not know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, you, they either love it, they either hate it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess the, the, as the further we got, I started realizing that, I started realizing that it was just, a, it was a lot more than just dance. Mm -hmm. You know, I started realizing that it was, it wasn't just me trying to create a piece that, that would get us through the next round or me trying to add a trick that was so cool that it'll bump up the scores. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was trying to figure out a way to, to push ourselves to, to tell a story that hasn't been told yet or mm -hmm. to, to to point out the to point out some of the 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 the, the issues in society that that needs to be heard yeah. you know and and for me it, it really was just like realizing that you know obviously the whole the the greatest part about that whole competition for me was was really just this build of friendship that I had with my partner mm -hmm. and it was crazy because we walked in literally just like only doing one video together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there has to be some sort of history and background. And we've known each other for a long time, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like this, like this chemistry or anything. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess what was the, what was like the biggest switch for me was realizing that 
not only was she my dance partner and not only was she my like best friend, but she was, she was that one person that understood every single reason why I stepped into dancing Mm -hmm. and we had the exact same reason, Mm -hmm. you know, like you could tell the moment you're rehearsing and and then you realize like when we go into and you're watching back in the footage, it's, it's, it's it, it everything came from like here everything right. came from here and it matched because we both had the same reasons we right. both had the same mindset we both had the same purpose mm. you know and and for me i'm like that's it's crazy because that's something that you can't rehearse mm-hmm. that's something that you can't necessarily practice until until you can't do it anymore it's something that you it, it, it it's, it's something that you have to genuinely find and genuinely trust for you stepping into a competition like World of Dance and and knowing that knowing that that you truly do it because you're you're truly going you're truly doing this competition because you really just want to motivate people and right. motivate the people that are watching and and trying allowing them to try to understand you know the reasoning of this piece mm-hmm. or the purpose of this piece and yeah i it, I I will I'll, I'll definitely never forget it. Yeah. You know, and did you guys choreograph everything yourselves? Everything I else? choreographed all their pieces, mm. um, and it, it it was it was tough for sure. Yeah, it's funny because we had like eight different versions for each piece, mm-hmm. and most of the time you 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 would like go into the competition um, preparing mm-hmm. for the pieces. You know, you would yeah. have like piece one, piece two. Yeah. And for me and her, for me and her, we were just like. Hey, as long as you get through the first round, we're good. Like as long as that happens, <laughs> yeah. that's that that's good, you know. Yeah. And and for me, like literally, as we're walking on stage, like in my mind, I was like, dang, are these blindfolds stupid? Do we need these blindfolds? Should I just scratch them <laughs> like in the middle on stage, you know? Yeah. But it, like it was, it was just like, it was it was it was definitely tough. Like it was. Then the reason why, like I said, I would never forget it was because. It, it pushed me in so many ways that I didn't expect. Yeah, totally. you know, like one week this piece, you know, and then it's like you have to, you have to level it up as you go, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that without obviously Casey's support and with her kind of uh, push, it was like, you know, it, 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 I would definitely probably wouldn't have been mentally been able to, you know, achieve all those pieces. Yeah, I would always say like, um, I'm, I'm the train. And then she's the one that goes choo choo, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I, I said I said yeah. that throughout the competition because because it, it really felt like that. Mm. It, it it was really that type of idea where, you know, if I couldn't do this, she's like then just forget about it, yeah. you know. And then if I didn't necessarily have someone to tell me to forget about it, I wouldn't have forgotten about right, it. Right. I would have been stuck on that specific area for like the whole night, yeah. you know. Um, but it was it was really nice to just have yeah her and and throughout the whole thing and 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 kind of seeing looking back at all the pieces For and sure. just realizing like dang that you could tell the amount of work that we put into this mm-hmm. uh and and why we did this yeah. uh and that was kind of our main goal with that yeah i, I don't think people may i mean yeah unless you've done a, a competition show like that <laughs> most people won't know the um all the things that go into <laughs> yeah. preparing week to week. Oh I mean, God. like you said, like preparing pieces. Like if yeah. we make it to week five, then yeah. we need to have at least five yeah. routines ready <laughs> exactly. to go, you know? And and you can only prepare so much before yeah. you're like, now the weeks have caught up to you and you're still drained. on the show. Yeah, exactly. Then you're, yeah, you're looking at your 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 tank and be like, how much gas do I have left in yeah. this thing? And yeah. how much can I go? And But I mean, like you said, though, when you're put in this situation, you'll be surprised of of what you can do because yeah. you kind of have no choice. It's either I, I rise to the occasion or I quit. Yeah. And you've already gone so far that quitting's not an option, right? Yeah. And so like, but I think something that you touched on that um I think is really cool when you, you said that you and your partner are able to play a certain part, you know, playing a certain role within within your your partnership, right? Yeah. And I think um in a, in a like say a big group setting like Kinja's, yeah. uh, and you know we went on the show with thirteen guys, and so yeah. you know as you can imagine, the more people you have on stage, it's just like that much work that that much more work that yeah. has to go into yeah. um, not only making sure you're clean, but like that your everything is utilized because literally every 
piece of what's happening on stage. Yeah. Each person plays a crucial role to that. Exactly. And, but to know that not everybody plays the same role because yeah. I think if everybody is trying to play the same role, then in essence you have no team because exactly. everybody's trying to be one position yeah. versus like you play this role, I'll play that. Like, let me pick up the pieces here. Yeah. And leadership happens from all, all different sorts of places. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, for you, from yourself, I like even just hearing you talk about it, it seemed like you learned, um, with Casey, cause it's not like you guys have done this before. It's like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. let me be the train. You be the conductor. Yeah, like, yeah, you, exactly. you choo choo yeah, 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 yeah. and I'll, I'll keep this thing going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's cool that you're able to, to find that out. And yeah. I think, you know, you could probably like learning that, taking that into yeah. whatever project you move into next yeah. and whether I mean, it be dance or just life. You yeah, know exactly. Saying? Cause yeah. the whole, the whole, the whole process of it, it it really like after everything that we went through it really just made me realize that the people that you have and the people that you care about and the people that you love for me it just made me realize that i have to make sure that like it's it's almost just important to have them in your corner to support them and and uh, kind of show them that you really care for them mm -hmm. you know i feel like you never want to let go of the people that are as special as those people, you know, mm -hmm. like, like I, most of the time you, obviously you have friends, you, you, you don't, and, and, you know, they leave or you leave or so, all yeah. those like issues and everything sure. like that. But I, I kind of just learned after that, that, that anytime you have someone that you truly care about, it, it, it's, it's it's just as important to show them that you really care for them and that you never let go of them mm -hmm. because because you've gone through so much already and at that certain point it, it, you 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 can only go downhill from there as easily you mm -hmm. know you can you can go downhill so easily at a point that it's your job to keep it up mm -hmm. and it's your job to kind of make sure that you know, you show just as much support that they've given you in the past journey or the past experience, you know? And, yeah. and for me, I'm like, that's why, that's why I cherish so many, that's why I cherish the people that I care about so much Yeah. because, you know, it, it sounds super cheesy, cheesy, but honestly, like with everything that I know and with every, with everything that I've done and the, where I am today, like it, it, it's it's not possible without all those people yeah. you know so yeah. it's it's really it was a really big eye opener for me yeah. and That's um dope, man. i i definitely like i said i won't forget about that so yeah the uh now schooling wise i mean did you 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 finished i would imagine all yeah. the way through high school yeah i i graduated high school two years ago okay but then i kept going uh, I'm still in school. Okay. Uh, oh, so you're I, in college. I'm in high school still. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm on my last year. Okay. Um, technically, I didn't have to, but I sh I did because I'm so I should. There you go. Yeah. You should. <laughs> yeah. Hands was on no, your hands. <laughs> I I did it because it, it it it's still a priority for me. You yeah. Know, obviously, with the whole education and everything like that, it's still a priority for me. And and I am on online to, okay. uh, with my school. And it is, it is a little bit tough because uh, both my parents uh, don't have that well of an understanding of English. Mm -hmm. um, so they can't necessarily teach me. Sure. So I have to kind of teach myself a little bit throughout mm -hmm. the whole process. But it's a really good, it's a really good like way of pushing myself in a different way. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm, I'm struggling, but well, I'm trying. <laughs> well, I, 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 this is a great question. And we talk about schooling all the time. I mean, we have people yeah. who went to high school, you know, finished through college yeah. and people who, you know, didn't yeah. finish either. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I love hearing the perspective on, um, people's, uh, you know, thoughts towards schooling and, yeah. um, you know, people think that, oh, you should finish college. And people are like, no, you don't have to. So for yourself, like, you know, being so busy, um, literally a good majority of your life yeah. as, as a, as a child, you know, from elementary school to junior high and then high mm -hmm. school, you were dancing yeah. pretty heavily yeah. through that whole time. Um, how was, did that make it hard for you to f like focus on school and even attend school and, and all of that? Yeah. I mean, I tried, I, I was in public school from like preschool to middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the second year of middle school, I tried homeschool 
Um, and then I tried one year of high school and I almost got kicked out cause I just missed so many days. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually went to the high school for culinary. Okay. Um, yeah. but then I went back to homeschool mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, balancing school and, and, and dancing and traveling and the whole teaching, choreographing, creating that type process, it's, it is really tough. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I wouldn't say that it's so smooth that, you know, I just go from school to this, this and that. Yeah. And I typically would say that it just depends in, in, in other people's situation because of, you know, their amount of, of passion that they have for creating something. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I, I, tr- I put so much time into something that I would create Mm -hmm. because for me, it's like if I would start something, you know, it would have to be worth my time. It would have to be worth my effort and everything like that. Um, and, and so that's why like, it does take a lot of time for me to think of something and then try to go back into school. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and for me, it's kind of just like, like if I am behind on school, it's almost at a certain point where, you know, my mom would have to remind me or I would almost have to rem- remind myself that that I, I would kind of have to just put that on pause yeah. and just finish that at a certain point. Because once that's finished, then your whole complete focus goes back into this rather than, you know, you going back and forth with, OK, I'm creating this. I'm trying to figure out what's the next storyline, mm-hmm. but also, oh, I have a lesson that I'm behind on, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's like this back and forth feeling. So, um, yeah, my mom is always a great reminder of you know, kind of telling me like, if you finish this, then you can start worrying about this, Yeah. you know? And sometimes I'm just like, there's like four tests and I really just want to finish this, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's definitely tough. But it, when you think about it, as long as you kind of set your priorities straight yeah. and figure out what, what needs to be done and then what needs to be on hold, um, and what could be on hold and what can't be on sure. hold, that type of feeling, mm-hmm. um, then you'll kind of figure out the balance a little bit better and Mm -hmm. it won't be as too chaotic as Mm -hmm. you, you know, would expect it to be. Yeah. I I mean, it seems like you, you and your, your mom have a a pretty good dialogue in terms of like, you know, what you need to be focusing on and what are, what what your options are. And I think Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's really important to have that open line of communication and and it's cool to have, you know, parents that support in such a way, um, you know, and then, and you don't have to seek education through, um, you know, conventional means like traditional schooling, yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. And, and uh, so, I mean, even from talking to you, you seem to have a, uh, a pretty curious and kind of inquisitive sort of nature where when you care about something, you're going to dig deep and research and find out So yeah. for yourself. Like what are, what are the things that you um, like to do to, you know, learn and to train and seek education um, that may not be conventional schooling methods? I mean, for me, it's, it's things like this, mm-hmm. you know, I, whenever I travel, um, and I see like great teachers with like great hearts and everything like that. It, for me, like I find it just as important to connect with them and almost ask them something that you possibly wouldn't be able to get from just watching them dance, Yeah, you know? And, and I, <laughs> surprisingly, I, I would talk to a lot of more, I would talk to more of my, my, my mentors more than kids my age. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find it like comforting because on a creative level, I feel like they understand mm-hmm. and and they they kind of s- support me in a sense where they would give me an advice from their experience, right? You know, and it's 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 so great because I I love kind of talking to them in a sense where you know every time I t- every time we talk or every time we get together, I'm instantly motivated to to push myself out of my box myself and just go for it without waiting for anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's why I love. That's why I love taking classes, you know, either if I am teaching at a convention or anything like that, it's, I'm not going to be scared of being like, oh, I'm a teacher. So people are going to look down on me because I'm taking a class. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's like because I am a teacher, it's almost my job to 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 prove to myself that I can I can still push myself to these different styles while still offering something that that is that represents me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I think that with all that, it's 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 really just kind of pushing yourself to 
find what feels more comfortable for you when you're actually trying to learn in an unconventional way. You know, like like I said, for me, it's talking. It's 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 just. You know, I I I will admit that there's sometimes, like, oh, ah, there's sometimes like <laughs> two could. years ago uh-huh. where um, I would almost try to figure out what I want to say mm-hmm. to people, mm-hmm. um, but then I would forget about it mm. because it's it's almost like unnatural for me to just think about it in a sense where I'm like, like trying to figure out okay, if I told the person, like, the way you pop is so intricate and it's so it's so interesting. What are some techniques, you know, mm-hmm. like they'll give me the techniques, but I guarantee you, I will forget about that in two weeks. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. And that's only because I'm not fully driven into what we're actually talking about. Yeah. And so then I kind of learned like you would just start a conversation, allow that to kind of naturally happen. And if it doesn't come up, then that just means that there's a different way of learning it. You know, if it doesn't mm-hmm. come up in a conversation, then that, that just means that maybe that person wasn't the right person mm-hmm. to, to ask about, you know, um, and, and it took me a while, but I, that's kind of how I figured out the whole, the whole talking conversation with, with new teachers, new dancers, yeah. uh, type of thing. And I, I, I have a tendency of like talking a lot. It's and okay. Nonstop. Dude, I love it. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I'm kind of as you're talking and as I'm like watching, it's like, oh, I think I know how you learn. It's, yeah. it's just literally what you said. Because yeah. I think the best, um, some of the best ways, I don't want to say the best, some of the best yeah. ways to learn are from literally talking to people, like everyone, talking yeah. to everyone and anyone because you you never know what you can learn from somebody. And when you have that kind of an open mind, um, and whether they're a dancer or not, you know, I've learned some of the biggest life lessons from people who don't even give a crap about what dance is, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, um, just being open to people's life experiences yeah. and, um, yeah, like you're, you're gonna be able to pick up gems from anybody, you know? Yeah, and I think so, the biggest problem is just not letting your ego in the way. Yeah, yeah. Cause I feel like once you allow that to kind of take over, it stops you from really, understanding what they want to tell you or what they're trying to tell you yeah. because that at that point you're kind of just like oh i feel like i should talk to them because i have to yeah. you know and, and if you feel like you have to then you're just wasting your time and you're wasting the person's time totally but if if you if you kind of just let your ego aside and and and, and stay open-minded about it it'll just naturally infuse within you mm-hmm. and then the moment you go into something or step into something it, it'll naturally happen and that's really because of your genuine care of or your interest about what you're asking the person, mm-hmm. you know, about this or that, yeah, you know, yeah. so. We, this whole time we've been talking literally about one of the things on, on <laughs> like we're talking about the dancer side, but I'm looking at like, I mean, well, some of the things that really popped out to me is like, you're an award-winning chef, man. Like, <laughs> what what is that all about? I mean, you said you went to high school initially to go pursue culinary, right? Yeah. I mean, how, how did that whole cooking realm, how does that even fit into this whole puzzle? I wouldn't say award-winning chef, but I mean. <laughs> uh, well, you were on like, like a, a, like a I TV show. Like I was on a TV show, yeah. Okay. I mean, when I was like. What was that show? When, I, uh, the first one was Amer- uh, not Mary Cut. Well, Rachel versus Guy Kids Cook Off, okay. and it was like I think like ten kids, and they were on two different teams. I was on Guy Fieri's team. Yeah. Uh, and how how old were you then? I think like ten. That's crazy. Or how many ten year olds can be on on a cooking competition? But here's the reason show. how I got on it. I every job that I came on to, uh-huh. I would always make like a treat. Okay. Like like, like I I went on like I would make these like jolly rancher lollipops okay and they were so easy to make it was like stack three jolly ranchers on top of each other in yeah. different colors put them in the oven and they'll melt together <laughs> you put a stick and roll it while it's still hot yeah then you let it cool and you pick it up and it's a lollipop yeah like super easy and i would make like 30 of those for like just the people that i was on with jobs and yeah. i just felt the need to do that because you know i just felt that it was a good you know experience for them to yeah. you know have a treat homemade People treat candy, and, man. and that yeah. yeah or just like a like a cookie or something sure, you know and yeah. some of the parents were like like oh you should try going on the show 
And so then the whole process was like them visiting my house. I had to cook for them. And, and when they were like, oh, we're going to come over and make you to, two recipes, it's like, I can't make them lollipops. Yeah. So I was like yeah. on the website, I was like, okay, uh, uh, chops, um, cheesecake, uh, something, you know? Okay. And I okay. kind of just like rolled with it. And then yeah. I got on the show. I don't know how. And then when I was 13, they had like four reoccurring um, competitors from that show yeah. to come on their show. Okay. And, and then I, I guess I won Chopped. Um, but I mean, the whole, re- it, the whole reason of like cooking, the reason why I started cooking was really just for, for other people. Okay. You know, I, I, I started this, like the first time I remember actually trying to cook a recipe was when I like made up this day called family appreciation day. Mm-hmm. And I like, <laughs> I really, I appreciated them so much that day cause they like <laughs> tasted my food and they acted like it was good. Uh-huh. And <laughs> I made them a whole menu. Like I, I like printed out sheets and then I like be tr- pretended to be their waiter. Sick. Um, and, and I remember they like tried it and they're like, it was so what good. What was on the menu? What'd you make? Um, I think it was like a kimchi burrito. Okay. Like kimchi fried rice burrito. Yeah. And, uh, some, some nice drinks on the side. Uh huh. Um, some seaweed, uh, and s- some sort of rice cracker with okay. like ice cream. So this is like a Korean inspired. This was like some sort of Korean. Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't know what phase I was going through yeah, during that time. Yeah. But like they tried it and they're like, so good, you know. <laughs> um, but I just remember like it wasn't the actual food that that made them happy about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just the the thought of it. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, it was a lot of watching cooking shows yeah. with my sisters and then testing them out and it was just really fun yeah. and then the more i got into it the more i just started cooking for other people yeah. or you know cakes for all that stuff and it was it was all kind of just like self-learning i guess and then i just took one year of culinary school in high school because i kind of wanted to learn the foundations of it yeah um just just so i don't make anyone sick you know <laughs> that's a and, good, good and plan then, and then yeah and i still do it where i you know if i feel the need to go over to someone's house for an event or something like that. It's, uh-huh. It it takes time, but it also shows thought. And yeah, I feel totally. like it just, it, overall, it makes people happy. Yeah. And that's kind of my main goal with cooking. So do you, so do you still cook and enjoy it? Yeah, and oh, for that? sure. Yeah. yeah, I cook. Yeah. I still, I cook every day for me and my mom because, because, you know, we don't do that greasy fast food stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good, man. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. I mean, yeah. well, so that, that's just, I mean, it makes sense to me whether, you know, it's, um, dance or picking up something like cooking. I mean, yeah. this, you keep bringing up this theme of, uh, you know, you want to do it to connect with people, right? Like yeah. dance for you and, and what you, um, enjoy about dance and the uh, the artistry of it is how it makes people feel and how people can connect with it and how people can express themselves through it yeah and then even with uh you know with cooking like you said you yeah. you did it to ultimately to serve people like hey yeah. i just want to treat you yeah. to something that i think you would appreciate yeah, and, yeah and um i mean i think if you take that sort of that principle alone of wanting to connect with people um you could literally get into any kind of hobby or industry because all of those require people. People, exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. what and, I mean? And, 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 I mean and yeah, like I think that's huge that you have that quality of like I just like connecting with people and I like I just like making people feel good. You know? well, yeah, I mean because like at the end of the day, it, 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 when when you set all those successes aside, what really has longevity is is just the people that you care about mm-hmm. and the people that you love and and the people that you go back to you know like that will last forever and and that will that is that is like almost the true definition of happiness mm-hmm. you know and and love like uh, those elements are are the true success itself you know and yeah. if you're so, so focused on the business or the 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 whole the whole industry side of everything you know it, it, it'll make you happy but what happens when it's gone mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and when that's gone you go back to the people that you you love mm-hmm. and 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 then you you're happy again you know what i mean so all every yeah everything that i kind of been approaching to you know dancing acting or you know cooking it's it's it's, it's just it's just a way to kind of kind of connect with people and not necessarily meet them, but mm-hmm. just connect them where like, if I see their reaction towards yeah, about something, yeah. it's, 
it's it's it it, it means a lot you mm-hmm. know and it's it's something that i i'm always grateful for yeah. because it it makes me it makes my whole heart warm and it's what it, it gives me the reason to do what i do every day right you know um you mentioned like things like um you know industry and and building uh essentially i mean what you're doing is you ha- you do have a brand of your own yeah, yeah and um you know you have a lot of people who are following you on your social media yeah. and all that and so um you know with that though uh you know in terms of yourself as a brand or even like a business you i mean you even have a clothing line yeah. right <laughs> um things like that so how do those things uh come up are the, is that by people saying hey you should start this and <laughs> and this is going to be a good you know yeah sort I, of like supplemental income for you or how, how, how does all that stuff kind of come i i i made a shirt with like my name a couple of years ago mm-hmm. it was like far it was a like way before like it was way before, probably like three years ago, like three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started, I made it three or four years ago. And then a lot of people were just requesting it. They were just like, oh my God, do you sell those? Like, no, I just made this online, you know? Mm-hmm. And and the whole brand of Loser, mm-hmm. it, it it was obviously to spread across a good message, mm-hmm. realizing that nothing's ever an insult. It's just motivation. Mm. Um and, you know, because there are certain times where people would either make fun of my sisters or me and, and at a certain point, like at school or something, a while ago, and they're like, oh, loser. And mm-hmm, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and it, the loser was really just like a brand that kept me and my sisters connected. Mm-hmm. You know, my one of my sisters lives in New York. She's a fashion designer. My other sister, she is a computer engineer. Uh, she She's studying abroad right now, mm-hmm. and I live here. Mm-hmm. You know, but throughout everything that we've done, it's kind of just kept us together with the whole Loser brand, mm-hmm. and it's allowed us to kind of take everything that we're good at mm-hmm. and combine it together and give it to people uh, so they hopefully will appreciate it and hopefully will, you know, inspire them in a way where anytime they would see the brand or they would wear the brand or even just acknowledge the brand it 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 um it keeps their mind open to realizing that you know it it's only it's only gonna hurt you if you let it hurt you Mm. you know and and if 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 you do take it personally or if you do let it sink in in a sense where where you you have a hard time taking into it then that's what people would want. That's mm. that's what they would expect, mm-hmm. and you don't want that. You know, you mm-hmm. you want to, you want to realize that you are enough, and that 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 people are doing it for a specific reason to put you down. They're putting you down for a specific reason because they felt the need that they're under you, they're lower you. Mm-hmm. You know, and and if if that if, if that if it does affect you then you're doing what they want you to do, you mm-hmm. know? And so it's it's just important to know that, you know, there's no such thing as a better person mm-hmm. or a better better act. It's 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 really just knowing that everyone is human, everyone has the same same feeling and and as long as you as long as you're just focusing on your own your own heart and and trusting it, then then you know, positivity actually will spread across everyone yeah, quicker yeah. than negativity. Because yeah. I heard that negativity travels faster than positivity. Mm. You know, and mm. and for me, it's kind of just like that. That's all. That's not. That's no one's fault. Mm. That's it's. If anything, it's just. Sorry, no. It's everyone's fault. You know, and even if it's if it if it if you don't mean it to be. Mm-hmm. You know, because it just naturally happens. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to make it your job to understand that it's better to spread positivity than than negativity because it's a win-win situation for the both of you right rather than a win-lose situation right. and at the end of the day when you do spread negativity it becomes a lose-lose situation right. yeah. because because at the, at that point like i said uh, earlier um the reason why i created wrong words with casey was because it was a life experience mm-hmm. where i would say like the wrong words don't only hurt others, but yourself at the end, yeah. you know? So it's, it's really just a whole 
whole like brand where where we wanted to allow people to kind of realize that mm. and um obviously it's not that deep maybe i would have to rewrite the website no, I but mean, cool. <laughs> Wait, so you do it with your sisters like you yeah guys are, you guys are my sister on one of my so. sisters handled the um whole business side of it sure. and the whole trademark area mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. my other sister handles all the designs of it mm -hmm. i handle most of the marketing and i dope, chip in man. with the designs and everything like that yeah. so it's, it really is just like a whole hands-on product uh yeah. kind of thing with all That's three sick. of us yeah family family clothing line dude. That's <laughs> yeah. super dope um so outside of uh dance though i mean well you do a ton of other things but like what do you do for fun what what's your way to unwind and kind of just get at, get away from stuff does dancing count <laughs> <laughs> it's just dance that's I it i mean um no i i i like to i don't know i most of the time if i feel like i'm not dancing then then i i mean it, it's 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 an escape mm -hmm. you know and obviously listening to music is like 27 24 7 for mm -hmm. me um when i'm not dancing I would typically go typically go to my short list of friends. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna list them because that's just embarrassing. Yeah, you don't need but <laughs> but I, I would like I would like probably find a time to, you know, either dance with them. Yeah. Oh shoot, that has dance in it. Um, <laughs> or cook for yeah, them. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also really like to kind of film. Or I guess video edit. No, yeah. like both. You know, I um I don't know, it's It's all good, man. If dance is your life, dance is your life, dude. I it's mean, yeah, I mean I if I'm not dancing though, like if I'm not actually physically dancing, uh -huh. it would almost like be in my mind where I would have to set something that I could possibly do for the world. Mm. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like mm -hmm. if I if I'm like really not in the garage at my house or at a studio or something like that, yeah, then I would possibly try to figure out something that I could possibly use for the future that will hopefully impact people, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of like my whole scheduling of my life. <laughs> so, I think like, I mean, as I ask you, I'm not, I'm not um, fishing for you to give me something that is not dance. It's just if yeah. there was, because, well, I mean, also what I'm getting from you now is that I think any, um, you know, like artists will, and that's really about their craft that's kind of like what they eat, sleep, drink, you know, breathe. They that's their yeah. that's their thing, and I think mm -hmm. that's why people um, who are like that are geniuses in that in yeah. their in their craft, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's dope. And then um, I mean, I, you know, I was just like kind of you know I was creeping your IG, and I was you know looking <laughs> at all yourself. I was like, man, this guy has a very um, just diverse range of of movement to. The choices of music that you like to move to, and you. like you can't, I wouldn't be able to categorize you into <laughs> a oh you're a this yeah. kind of dancer like yeah, you yeah. are to me. It's just it's just dance. You know what I mean, I think that's yeah, super dope. Thank you. That means a lot. Um, for like you know, for the sake of like future stuff though, uh, do you have like a dream in terms of what you? aspire to not necessarily become and that's like your end all be all but like something that you want to accomplish in your career yeah i mean something that i kind of realized um these past couple of months or even past years was that like a lot of acting was involved mm. in, in in my pieces or in my dancing and stuff like are that. you heavily acting and stuff now yeah i actually i acted i did a lot of like guest stars on like a lot of like networks like disney or or, or nick um Sick. when i was younger mm -hmm. and i look back at those and i question myself why i ever did those <laughs> um but uh i did go through a whole acting career phase a while back and then i took a break because i was trying to focus more on dancing after mm -hmm. um you know with the whole sacrificing and everything like that but then i started realizing that i wasn't necessarily sacrificing acting because i was always doing it when I was dancing, mm -hmm. you know, I was always putting myself in a certain person's shoes or a, pers a certain character that I had to make myself into mm -hmm. as I was dancing. And when a lot of people confuse like acting and dancing, whenever I say that, because, you know, they expect like, oh, if you're doing hip hop, you have to act like a duck or, or like, or like a sad person when you're doing hip hop. Uh -huh. But like, even when you're doing hip hop, you're, 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 if you're, 
if you're truly like if you're truly putting hip hop in an artist's kind of perspective you're you're almost acting like as if you know you're you're going after someone mm-hmm. or like you're having such a hard time letting go or something like that you know you're always going through some sort of emotion as you're doing any specific style mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. and for me at least for me that's that's how i always thought of it when i when i did any style and mm-hmm. and i started realizing that i wanted to get into a more straightforward acting career mm. um as as the years go by and kind of just um hopefully use that because I, I i i i i can tell that i feel like dancing and acting are the two art forms that that impact people in a sense where it will catch their attention mm-hmm. you know it'll it'll, it'll it'll it's more memorable mm. you know i feel like it's mm-hmm. more memorable when people kind of see it in a sense where like oh i remember this movie or i remember this piece or i remember you know this uh short film you yeah. know and it's like yeah. and w- after watching it or after seeing it it it's 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 made me rethink the way i think mm-hmm. and it's 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 it affected my life in a sense in, in a much more positive way a much more efficient way mm. and you know that's all because of the whole purpose of this film or this piece and everything mm-hmm. like that mm. so i mean hopefully you know, the whole acting thing turns out well in the future. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if anything, I I I'm not planning myself for anything mm. um, in the future. I, I I just let the universe take me mm. wherever it take so wherever it wants going, to take. You're just going with what's what's going on right yeah, now. Cause, yeah, you know whatever happens for me and uh, it happens for a reason. Yeah. And then whatever whatever doesn't go my way, there's always a reason for yeah. that. You know, and there's always another door. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. And you know. As I said before, if you truly love it, then you're not waiting. Mm-hmm. You're you're really just you're really just evolving mm-hmm. in your own way. Because mm-hmm. at that sense, then you're you're you you're not rushing. Yeah. To to be something, you're just continuously doing what you love, and and that makes you happy. And that itself is your own success. You know. So. I dig it, man. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask you about success, but you just answered it right now, so that's good. Um, dude, we're gonna do a, a quick lightning round. Yikes! With you. So I'm gonna fire Too off cute. some questions. Oh and no! You just gotta come off top. I suck at these. I'm like. So this is gonna be like, really fun then. Oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Answers. Lightning round. Three, two, one. What is your dream collab? Oh. Mm. oh Keone. Oh, oh, you hear snap. That, <laughs> oh, snap. Um, what is your most memorable performance? Mm. First round or first, yeah, round of World of Dance. Season one? Season two. Season two. Okay. With, yeah, okay. with Casey. Uh, most embarrassing dance moment. Oh, I don't remember. Uh... <laughs> is that that many yeah or? oh my god yeah, yeah it was a lot oh this one time i i did do it in a competition and then we were rehearsing with money like uh-huh. like i was supposed to go like this yeah and show it to her and then uh we rehearsed it and i gave it to my teacher and then we went on next oh wait i don't talk fast with these lightning rounds right <laughs> you can do it whatever oh, okay. you want dude. so then we got back on stage and then i was like this but the money was in my teacher's hand. So when I was on stage, I was really just doing this. And there was no money. And she was really just grabbing nothing. And so then I was like, wow, what are we doing? And she was yeah. like, I don't know. I was like, let's just continue. So that was really embarrassing. Hey. At least for the both of us. That's good. No one else knew but you hey, guys, I'm exactly, sure. It's yeah. All, exactly. Like, yeah, it's still good stuff. <laughs> um, if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, Jesus. Oh, you're not breathing right now. <laughs> chicken. Chicken? <laughs> it took you that long to come up with chicken? I don't know. I was going back. Like what? Fried like, chicken? Like, chicken nuggets? What? Chicken. Okay, you just Chicken's love chicken. Chicken's great, yeah. Okay, or, or cool. Like, or like popcorn. Popcorn? I mean, I guess but popcorn's that's not, good, That's not man. food. You know, I wouldn't eat that for popcorn's the rest food. of my life. I love popcorn, but like, that's not like... Wow, eating yeah. popcorn for the rest of your life. Or, that's wild. All right, we're going to go with yeah. chicken and popcorn. Right, You're ooh, going to open up a chicken and popcorn restaurant. Yikes. <laughs> if you had to make one food to impress the girl of your dreams, <laughs> what would it be? Oh, God. Um, 
<laughs> Depends on the girl. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just boil some chicken for this girl. Boil some, boil some, some chicken, chicken, for my, for my chicken and wash dog. it down with some popcorn. Yeah. Um. I I, I would probably say like. Um. Like a really nice. Like marinated grilled chicken with with uh with like fried rice and <laughs> no i would do like a surf and turf you know like i would surf do like really big jumbo tiger shrimp that's marinated with garlic and lime Let's and go. then i would put on top of like a crispy brown rice kind of uh base with 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 uh with asparagus, like with roasted asparagus, and and a nice demi gloss with, oh, uh, damn, yeah. that got which, super specific. You went is, from boiled which, chicken, <laughs> to like super just a little, detailed uh, yeah, surf and exactly. turf. Exactly. Uh, that the wasn't side. even. There, there was no turf in that dish, but yeah, hey, it's, okay. it's all good, man. It works. <laughs> uh, something about you that people probably don't know. So whether it's a hidden talent or something that people wouldn't know about you do you have a guilty pleasure do you have something on your playlist on your spotify that you would hope that no one ever finds out i'm trying to figure out something that won't ruin my life no i'm kidding (laughs) (laughs) not Um, that serious man uh I guess everyone just knows everything about you. Apparently, I, I guess. Oh man, something that people don't know about me. Um. Wow. Uh, it's okay if you I don't was, have anything. <laughs> I was like. I did like a small voiceover job for Penguins of Madagascar. What? <laughs> Tight. Yeah. I did not know yeah. that about you. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was a little, it was a little, it was a little, a little job, but Sick. you know, that's dope. You hear me laugh a little bit in that movie. You hear okay. a little, <laughs> and then a little bit of like a, it was, it was, it was like a little like you know audio thing, and then yeah. you hear like a, hey. So yeah, you know, just so voiceover. Just a you're a penguin voiceover actor. Wasn't a penguin, but I was a voiceover in the penguin movie. Ah, you know, got you, yeah, got I'm, you. I'm big. Still get That's like pretty tight. One cent checks in the mail. That's what, you know? dude. I get those one cent checks, Oof. man. You know, those add up, man. Oof. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what is your golden rule? My golden rule. Your life mantra. Um, I have a golden quote. What's your golden quote? Uh, where there's love, there's life. Solid, solid. Yeah. That's what it is, man. Well, Sean, you've you've been doing a whole lot, man. <laughs> and you're you're killing the dance world. Thank and you. um Thank you. Yeah, man. I mean it's cool to hear um the history of uh you know how it dance into your life, but I, I think what's even cooler is uh um, why you connect with dance in the way that you do. And then, yeah. you know, even the other things like cooking and, yeah. um, you know, acting and all that. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like you're, you're definitely the type of kid who, um, knows what you like. Cause mm-hmm. I think that's something that's hard to, cause you know, some people don't know what they like. And so they yeah. just kind of go every which way and mm-hmm. kind of end up switching roads because they, you know, were traveling down a road that they weren't even about. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, it's really cool, man. And it's really cool to see your focus and, Thank you. um, you got a lot of people following you, man. And, you know, not to put too much pressure on you, but, you know, like you are a role model to, yeah. you know, the the generation that's even For younger sure. than you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's something that, um, you know, I'm sure with, you know, you being here at, at the Kinjas Dojo, you see you've come and taken classes here. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's cool that in any industry, there's, there's generations of people that, um, you know, are ahead of you that you can look up to and yeah. be inspired by. Mm-hmm. And then in turn, that torch kind of gets passed down to you. Yeah. And, and then you're going to be that next generation of, you know, inspirational people for mm-hmm. younger kids to kind of look up to. Thank so um, it's yeah. dope to see what you're doing, man. Thank and and you. thank you for coming out here, taking the time yeah. out of, uh, of, of your schedule to, yeah, to course, talk. And, um, I mean, yeah, I think, I think the generation we're at now too, I think it's like 
super important for us to kind of remember that we always have to respect the older generation and we have to thank them for what we know today, you know, and always appreciate them because they're, they're, they're the, the definition of the knowledge that we have now, you know? Word, word. So yeah, I thank you for so much for having me. For sure. It's an honor. For yeah, sure. Of course. What, uh, what are your uh, social media, you know, websites and all that where people can follow your journey and all that? You can follow my journey at this address. No, I'm kidding. Oh, give <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. Like, right. Don't do that. Um, you can f- you can follow me at um, Twitter. I'm not really good at Twitter, but you can still follow me at Twitter. You know, uh, Sean Lu one one two five one one two five is my birthday, November twenty fifth. Nice. Uh, Facebook is Sean Lu. There may be some fakes, but it's all good. You can follow those too. Um, <laughs> Instagram is Sean Lu. Simple as that. S E A N. L E W. Um YouTube is youtube.com slash Sarah Cerise Sean. Sarah S A R A H S E R R I S S E A N. That's my YouTube channel. And uh yeah, you can follow me there. Oh, yeah, and you, you could Oh there. yeah, you yeah. could you could follow Loser. Uh the website is theloser.com cuz you're the loser, you know, in the best possible way. Nice. Uh the L E W S E R. L E W S E R. Don't type in loser L O S E R cuz that's not what we are. We're L E W S E R. theloser.com. And yeah, um and so, oh, you can follow my dog. Oh, Oreo got she's, an IG. She's the best. Oreo <laughs> on Instagram. She ain't got a YouTube channel. She doesn't need that. She's just lazy. And Oreo. Okay. But yeah. Um, and then the Kinjas. Hey. Yeah. That's you know, what's up. We're always inspiring the younger generation and everyone in the whole community. So yeah. That, that, that thing I covered it all. Yeah, you plugged away, my friend. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> but yeah, man. Thanks for coming on and chatting. Um, of course. Before you bounce, man. Yeah, of course. To oh, my gosh. With our bomber jacket. No way. Here, I'm going to just uh, pass it over to you. Uh, and uh, this is let like, you handle that. It's like, like it's like a, Christmas over here. Like Sorry, Ori, I don't have a jacket for you. Uh, we need to make dog. She's not even going to wear it. She'll take it off. We need to make dog clothes soon. We're going to be. Ripping off the package. Oh, this is an un, un, uh, unpackaging? Is unpackaging. It's not an ASMR. unboxing, it's an un, unwrapping, is, I guess. Can just, the can just bomber jacket. <laughs> for people who are listening on a podcast, <laughs> it just sounds like a whole bunch of yeah, noise. It just sounds this like a bunch of noise. This is for the video. Ooh, thank you so much. Yeah, guys. man. Really thank you for it. Thank you for crazy. coming through. Yeah, of course. Um, but um, yes, if you guys are listening, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, if you're not subscribed, get on to iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast needs. Kinjas.com slash podcast, cast with a K. Uh, we're on IG, Kinjas Podcast. We got Facebook, all that. If you just type it in there, you'll find us. Um, if you like what we're doing and if we're providing some value to your life, share it. Share this podcast. Share this episode. Leave us that five-star rating. Um, do all the cool stuff and uh, send us all those IG stories. I like to regram and comment on every one of those. We love, so. we love the stories. We do love the stories. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Thank you guys for listening and Thank or you. watching. Till next time. Peace out. Could you